Hey, welcome to the prayer port. It's exciting to have you here today, and I am glad that you're here. Most of all, I'm glad that my Father's here. God, I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you are uh, your presence and your faithful presence. Lord, you just say, we knock, you answer, and say, come on in, come on in, come get your cup of coffee. You know, I, I, I love my fellowship with you. So, Lord, I just pray in this day that I fellowship with you all day long. That your spirit just bubble up within me and that I know your presence today. I thank you for who you are and I pray that what I say, what I see, what I hear is of you. And that your light is what shines through me. Use me in these next moments, Lord. Take these words and let them be yours. I love you and I praise you in Jesus' name. I um, I love, 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 love my Bible verse today. And I love my Bible verse because of an amazing woman who, um, two amazing ladies, whose stories have brought me through my childhood. And I just have looked up one I got to know in person, the other one through books. And, um, and I just, they've always been my unsung heroes. You know, those people in your life who you just are like, whether they are, you know, they can be fictional or non-fictional, but those, there's just those people or characters that you just hold on to and say, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. And for me, there was two ladies that I was just fascinated with their stories. I could read them 101 times and um, or sit and listen. And one was I was blessed because she was actually my uh, great aunt, um, <coughs> Aunt Darlene Diver. And she wrote a book, Evidence Not Seen. And she was actually, she was married to my mother's uncle, who was more like my mother's brother. And um, it was Russell and Russell Dibler. And uh, Darlene and Russell got married and went to the mission field. And they were in the mission field when World War II broke out. And because of that, they were taken prisoners by the Japanese. And she wrote a book about her time in that Japanese prison camp and how uh, she was tried as a spy because she could speak several languages. And um, it's a great book if you get your hands on it. It's called Evidence Not Seen. And by Diane, uh, by um, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Darlene Dibler Rose, cause she remarried because the country, while well, my uh, uncle was in Japanese prison camp, he was killed. And so she remarried so that she could go back over and continue to minister. But she would come visit. When I was a little girl, she would come visit and she stayed with our, at our house a couple of times. And when she did, oh, I just sat and would just listen to her stories. And I would love to hear her stories. And I love to hear, she would talk about Tozer. She was friends with Tozer. And um, she writes about that in her book. And she um, would just talk about her experience. But I tell you what I liked, not just her stories of how God had her testimony of how God brought her through, I could sit and listen to her forever because scripture was so woven in her life that when she talked, those verses, she would speak scripture just right with her, with her regular conversation. She was able to, she would talk it and she wouldn't get the right, you just knew it was scripture, you know, I memorized, I thought, I memorized that person, she's saying it, she's just including it in her conversation. The Holy Spirit and God's word was written so much on her heart that that's what sustained her. And she talked about how when she was in prison camp, if you read her book over and over again, it was God's words and God's scriptures that just kept echoing in her mind that sustained her, that gave her the answer, gave her directives with where she should go and what she should do to and, and, and how it saved her life. And it was all because she wrote God's word on her heart. Corey Ten Boone was the same. And one of this today's scripture verse made me think of Corey Ten Boone because of her book, The Hiding Place. She wrote a wonderful book too. If you're a reader, you want to get your hands on both of those books because they remind us how important our faith in God is. In when times seem like they are bigger than us, because we're going to hit times that are bigger than us, whether it be sickness, whether it be um, just confrontation and dis, dis, um, not being happy where we're at or uh, just having war times of war as a nation, as individuals. All of this is times that we need his scripture in our heart. 
And when we do, it's that peace that passes understanding that God has just kept telling me all how long here. We got on this prayer porch and just said, God has a peace for you. God has joy for you. God has these things. It's not just when it's easy or when it's fine. It's all the time. That's when you pull on it. That's what it is. And um, so when I think of that verse, I, th I think of this verse because I think of Corey Ten Boom and I think of Aunt Darlene and these women who I admire in my life because they wrote God's word in their heart. And when they got in troubled times, it was that word that carried them through. It was that word that pulled them through. And it just reminds me to be hungry and taste and know that the word is good. And it's kind of funny because what brought me to this was talking about tasting and knowing that the word is good. What brought me to this is because this is the page I spilled my coffee on last week. And um, it's it's dried now, but it's got a little bit of disfiguration. And so because it's disfigured, I um, was looking and it's actually on the reverse page is the verse that he gave me today. And I was like, oh God, again, you're just reminding me, taste, taste, let it be honey on my lips and water to my soul. That's what I want scripture to be. I want it to flow from my mouth in conversation where it's anointing other people and anointing my own soul, refreshing my own soul, because it's just a part of who I am. And this verse comes from Psalms. If you go to Psalms chapter 32, and I'm actually going to pick up in the middle of it, even though the beginning of it is wonderful too, because um, it's a Psalm of David. It starts off, oh, what joy for those, um, um, for those whose dis disobedience is forgiven and whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, the joy for those whose reward the Lord has declared, has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived with complete honesty. Wow. Basically, it's saying, David's saying, thank you for our salvation. Thank you that we can walk without that guilt. Because you jumped down a couple verses. I ended up saying I was starting in the middle and I started at the beginning. But just let's just grab it. The whole book is beautiful. Psalms 32 it says, finally, I confessed all my sins to you and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. He already knows what we've done. He's just asking us, come on, I, I just, I need you to ask forgiveness. I need you to ask me to cover that in my son's blood so that you can be set free. You're keeping yourself in bondage if you hold on to that sin. He says, let it go. I'm frozen. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go and give it to him. Give it to him. He wants to forgive you. He wants to set you free and give you joy unspeakable. And that's what it says there, finally. It's interesting, David says, finally, I let it go. I held on to this I, as though you couldn't see it. And I know you see everything in me. And yet, here I am. I finally confessed my sins to you. And I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself that I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me. All of my guilt is gone. I no longer have to say, oh, what if people, what? No, God's erased it. Like I said yesterday with riding the bicycle. He says, I've covered all that behind. Let go. Give it to me. Say, Lord, I've sinned. I did wrong. And I need your forgiveness. Then the key is this. You need to accept that forgiveness. You need to realize, he says, I got you, child. Sometimes the hardest thing for me in my childhood was telling my mom and dad what I did wrong. And every time I did, it always blew my mind because they already knew. <laughs> they were waiting for me because of me telling them. It wasn't for them. They already knew. It was because it released it for me. Suddenly, I didn't feel like I... Satan plays with us when we think we're hiding something. Because he makes that turn into guilt and he lets that eat at us and it lets it, he lets it distract us from what we're supposed to be doing. God says, speak it out to me, Lord. Tell me in prayer. Tell me, God, forgive me. I thought this thought, I did this, I, I, whatever it is. And he says, when you tell me, 
You've taken away Satan's ammo to use it against you because I already know. And then you can hear me say, because you're not going to hear me when you're trying to hide it. I remember when I would do things wrong as a kid, I avoided my parents. I know when someone's done something wrong because they avoid you. I don't want to see her because I did. Da, 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 and I don't know how to tell her. But when you tell, when you fess up on it, you're the one that gets free. You're the one set free. And that's what he's saying here. And then he comes to this verse, and this is where I was supposed to start, or was going to start. Obviously not supposed to. God had something else for you, whoever that's for. Therefore, maybe for me. He always brings it back around to me. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you, Lord, while there's still time. I covered that in a prayer porch a while back. He's not going to wait forever for you to ask forgiveness. They may not drown then in the flood waters of judgment. And this is my verse. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. Then the Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. So don't be like a senseless horse that, or mule that has to have a bridle in its mouth to keep it under control. Don't be like that. That When you have to have a bridle, it's because you're hiding something. You're trying to be defiant to what God's directing you. And defiance usually is because we're hiding sin. He says, confess that sin. Come to me and know that I have forgiven you. Accept that forgiveness. Accept that and accept me because I'm waiting for you. We've got wonderful things. And when you do that, it says, I'll guide your path. You'll hear my voice. You'll know what I want from you. And then the chapter ends like this. It says, many sorrows will come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All of you who obey him, shout for joy. Woohoo! Yeah! All of you whose hearts are pure. How do we get a pure heart? Not because we're perfect. We get a pure heart because we came to him and asked for forgiveness. We came to him and said, without you, I am nothing but with you. I can do all things. So Lord, forgive me whenever I've fallen short. Forgive me when I've sinned. Forgive me. David's writing this. David was, it says that David was a man after God's own heart. And yet he slept with another man's wife. And not only did he sleep with another man's life, wife, he lied about it. He tried to hide it and he even had that man killed. He brought that man home and said, go, go, go and sleep with your wife. And that man was so loyal to David. He said, no, I can't even do that. I need you to because I need you to think this baby's yours. Is what his heart was saying. The whole time David was hiding something, he was having a hard time staying aligned with what God had called him to do. But when he released that, when he released that, and he confessed it. And he knew God. He already, God already knew because Samuel came to him and told him. But it didn't release David until David took it before God. And David realized that God is his hiding place. God is his hiding place. And he will protect him from trouble. And that he surrounds him with songs of victory. No matter what you did, he can't separate you from the love of God. The only thing that separates you is you. Because it's not even Satan. 
not even Satan. The only thing that separates you from God is you because as soon as you declare Jesus as your Savior, as soon as you repent and confess, just dump all that garbage out, then the stench of garbage doesn't smell inside anymore. And you don't feel it and you feel release. There's a freedom in that. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But the spirit of the Lord can't dwell with things that you're still holding on to. But when you release that, you discover, oh, I'm in the shelter of his wings. He's my hiding place. No matter what happens around me, his joy is within me. And I can find the strength to do exactly what we talked about yesterday. To be strong and courageous. Because he is in us. And we are in him. The only thing that keeps you from realizing you're even in this hiding place or being in this hiding place is you. I'm thinking of a little kids playing hide and seek and I wanted to be found. So you kind of make a little noise, but yet you didn't want to be found. But sometimes in that hiding place, you're like, ah. Oh. This time, that hiding place, the best hiding place for me was when my dad knew where I was and he wasn't telling my siblings and he'd be watching me like this. And I hate They'd come in and say, have you seen Lori? And he'd say, I'm, uh, I don't think so. And then he'd look over at me. God wants to be your hiding place. The only thing that keeps you from that is you. All you have to do is say, Daddy, hide me. Daddy, hold me. Daddy, keep me. Go read it. Psalms 32. It's a gooder. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in the hiding place. In his word. Hide his word in your heart. Then you won't have to worry about sinning against God. You'll stop yourself before it comes. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.